Well, hello, everybody. My name is Ted Gardner, and uh, I'm an interviewer for the Library of Congress Oral History Project. And today we have the pleasure and the honor to talk to Bill Carrelli, and that's C-A-R-R-E-L-L-I. Got it. Famous American name. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Bill is uh, our, our World War II veteran here today, and we have not only is it a, a pleasure for me, but it's an honor, Bill, to meet you, and we've never laid eyes on each other before that never. I remember. I must have been in a mask or something. I, nevertheless, <laughs> here we are, and, and, uh, and we're going to learn about you, and the important thing is to get you on record so that your family and your friends and they all see the DVD because this is that what comes out of this interview, and you'll have that forever, and a copy will be kept here in the library archives, and a copy sent to the archives in Washington D.C. So uh, we have to be very careful what we say here. We don't. Want, True. We don't True. want to embarrass anybody. Do we? <laughs> Anyway, where were you born, Bill? I was born right here in Cincinnati. What part of town? Uh, at that time, I think it was Walnut Hills. Walnut Hills? Yeah, then we moved to Norwood. Okay. Uh, what street in Walnut Hills, do you remember? Boone Street. Boone Street. That's where I was born, yeah. That ran off, off uh, McMillan, uh, didn't McMillan, it? McMillan, I think, somewhere around yeah, there. Because we moved away from there when I was four years old. Okay. Well, as uh, I checked recently, and it's still Walnut Hills, mm -hmm. but it's changed a little bit. Oh, yeah, it's changed quite a bit. Then you lived, how long did you live in Norwood? <sighs> well, we moved to Norwood and when I was 14, 1924 until I left for the Army in 1941. I'll be darned. And you went to elementary school in Norwood? Please? Elementary school in Norwood? Yeah, St. Peter and Paul. Oh, you St. Peter and Paul. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us about your family. What? Well, I had three sisters, two brothers, wow. and I'm the only one left. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. I see. So you were born we in were, 1920? 1920. How about that? Mm -hmm. right. A long time ago. Oh, my goodness. Isn't it something? Mm -hmm. went, but went too fast, really. I know. It really <laughs> did. But we remember those depression days. Oh, like, yes. Oh, yeah, yes, we yeah. do. Well, now, three sisters and two brothers. Yeah. Uh, Nice-sized family mm -hmm. and um, uh, elementary school. Tell us about, what, what do you remember about elementary at St. Peter and Paul? Well, let's see. I remember at St. Peter and Paul, and uh, I was up on the top floor and Enjoyed looking out the window, seeing the scenery way up, way far off. Sure. And then I enjoyed uh, the uh, recesses and stuff like that. You worked your way down. I worked my way down. <laughs> <laughs> now, how far did you go uh, grade-wise in? Uh, eighth grade. Eighth grade. You went through the eighth grade. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then it's time for high school. So what? High happened? school. I went to Purcell. Purcell. Okay. Well, that's... Uh, didn't, didn't graduate, though. You didn't graduate? No. Okay. Um, so, let's see. You went into Purcell then about, uh, what, about... Uh, 19, 37 to 38. 37 to 38. Okay. And uh, then did you go to work or what? Yeah, I went to work. I went to work in a... Uh, a place called Goodall Tailoring Company. Hmm. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Where was that? That was in Oakley. Hmm. In Oakley, in, uh, right off of Norwood. Okay. And work, uh, studying, uh, not studying, but working to be a trimmer to cut out the sleeves and, and pockets and stuff like that to, before they assemble the suits. I'll be darned. How about that? Mm -hmm. So that was a great trade. Yeah. Yeah. And from there, there's when I got drafted into the service. And you were drafted in when? What year? 41. 41, before Pearl Harbor. War didn't start yet when I was drafted. Yeah. yeah. I was, you know, in them days, uh, you drafted and you said, goodbye, dear, I'll be back in a year. Yeah, right. But it didn't come back to three and a half years later. I know it. I know it. <laughs> yeah. Well, now... Um, 
in in your in your <laughs> being warmly welcome, welcomed by Uncle Sam. Uh, were you sent across the river to Fort yeah, Thomas? Yeah, I was sent across the river to Fort Thomas and got inducted in there and got your uniform and all that kind of stuff together. Sure. And a lot of times they put me on KP. I had to do KP duty while I was there. And then from there, they shipped us down to Fort Benning, Georgia. Oh, you went to the infantry down no, there? No, that's 2nd Armored Division. Oh, that was a replacement unit for the uh, Armored Division. Oh, really? I was in the 2nd Armored Division, 67th Armored Regiment. Well, what about, now what did, what were your duties and learning in that? Was this with tanks and so forth? Yeah, tanks. Well, when, when I was down at Fort Knox, I got my training in 61 millimeter mortars. Oh, yeah. Then when I left there, I never saw a mortar again. I went right into a tank depart, uh, unit uh -huh. down in Fort Benning, Georgia. When we got there, had old tanks. They weren't up to date or anything. We had like a, uh, for the gun, we used to have like a, uh, a branch from a tree sticking out pretending that was a gun because we didn't have good equipment in at all. Right, right. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that those days, yeah. uh, we were an isolationist nation. Yeah, we were. We didn't want to get involved. You know, we thought, well, we've got an, an ocean on each side of us. We're okay. Right. But that all happened, uh, went to heck in a handbasket. Well, now, as I asked uh, <clears throat> your friend Art, as I asked everybody, almost everybody who grew up in those times remember where he was on Pearl Harbor Day. Pearl Harbor Day, I was in Fort Knox. Oh, you were already that's down, when the war, down there? That's when, yeah, it was a, yeah. yeah, I was already in the service. Sure. I was down in Fort Knox. I'll be darned. Well, at Fort Knox, were you, um, uh, you learned about mortars and mm -hmm. that sort of thing? Mortars, rifles, but I didn't see those anymore but because I used... went straight into a tank unit sure, down sure. in Fort Benning, Georgia. Now, how long were you at Fort Benning? Several months? Mm, I guess close to a year, maybe something like that. Really? In, down at Fort Benning, training. Getting into new equipment and stuff like that. Now that must have been pretty exciting to finally get some new stuff. Yes, it was. Up to date. Start getting the new M4 tanks, yes. Sherman tanks. Sherman tank. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great tank. And got a lot more training while sure. while we were there. Sure. And working on the tanks to get them back in shape, get them in, you know. Tell us about the gun on the on the Sherman. Well, tank. on the gun on the tank, you had uh, three. Three machine guns, 30 calibers, and one 37 millimeter cannon. Wow. Oh, and then there was four of us in the tank. You had your driver, the assistant driver, the commander on top, and the gunner. Mm -hmm. Well, it was reversed. The gunner was on this side, the commander was on this side. You know, we, we read about in history books and hear about uh, on the History Channel and so forth that the Sherman tank had some flaws. Yes, it did. Tell us about that. Well, I wasn't in the big tanks. I was in the M4, smaller tank. Oh, that's the smaller tank. That's, that's the smaller right. 30, tank, the M4. You said 37 mm -hmm. gun. Yeah. The bigger tanks, yeah, that was the uh, Sherman tank. Yeah. And they were produced, they did a lot of uh, a lot of good with those tanks. Yes, I should mm -hmm. say so. They were awesome, weren't they? Really? Yeah, they were pretty awesome, but they were, uh, standing up against the panzer, uh, oh, the yeah. uh, panzer tank, I was that was that was, that was rough because that I was, was that tank was outstanding. Yeah, I should say. Now, your duty in the tank, did you uh, have to be a mechanic? No, I was first when I got into a tank. I was a driver. You were a driver. I was the driver of the tank. <laughs> no, wait a minute. I'll take that back. I was the assistant driver. Okay. Yeah, assistant driver. You sit in the tank like this, and you got a machine gun right in your lap. Wow. And then over here, then after that, they put me into a driver's seat. And I was a driver, and you got two pulleys, like a mm -hmm. tractor, the way you drive your tank. The, the way you want to go left, you pull the left. You want to go right, you pull the right. And you put the fourth, and you got a periscope that you look out of to see off, you know. But most of the times when you're in training, 
we used to ride with the seat up. We had our head out about this far. I see. And then I went up to, then, uh, then after but the tank commander got hit, uh, he got hurt. Then they put me as commander. I was a commander of the tank. That's when I became sergeant. I see. My goodness. Well, that was a very, very uh, important, uh, important position. And of course, oh, uh, did you have seat belts? Did you have a harness or anything like that? No, I don't think so. I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember the seat belts or the harness. Seat belt. We had a, you know, you got a little button down here like a lever you can go up and down oh yeah yeah you go sure. up and put yourself out <laughs> now when you get in action or anything like that, you close yourself down just look out the periscope how about that well um what kind of speed could you do in that tank mm. we well, get up to sometimes 35 40 miles really? away that mm -hmm. fast that was fast for it we did a lot of training when we got to africa too mm -hmm. and uh, we used to really drive them through fast well, you're getting in uh, before Pearl Harbor, of course, and then your, your early training, uh, and as you say, North Africa. So you got, in a, you got over there fairly early in the war. Yeah, we got it. Well, I was in the invasion of Africa. The first in November the 8th, 42. I'll be done. I was in the invasion. I remember going across. You could see ships as far as you want to see. You were there with Eisenhower then. Yeah. He was in command of that? He was at commander of that. And then on the November 8th, 1942, uh, we seen land, because mm -hmm. it took us about eight, ten days to get there mm -hmm. on the ships. Mm -hmm. And uh, we saw land. And on November the 8th, 42, that's when they start shelling Africa, you know. Sure. The Navy was throwing shells over there. And then. Uh, now, uh, uh, before you got there, you went over on a big troop ship, or yeah, troop ship. I think the name of the ship was a Lake Hurst or something like that. Okay. It was a troop ship. And then, so you came across the Atlantic, and and through the Straits, past Gibraltar, and no, we went straight into uh, Africa. But we came. I don't oh, think, I see. Yeah, yeah, we straight into Africa on that western bulge of right, Africa. Right, right. Casablanca. Were you at Casablanca? Yes. We landed in. I landed in. Uh, I think the name of the town was Safi. There was one town, and the next town was called Fidela or something like that. And we landed in there. When I came off of the ship, that, that days they didn't have the LSTs. Right. They had the smaller one, the LCIs. The LCI. So what they did, they put out the, L, the LCI would pull along the side of the ship, and the crane would lower your tank down into the ship. And then you would have to come down. You're about six or so, seven stories high. Hmm. You had to come down on a rope ladder to get back into the little uh, LCIs and bring you into shore. Oh my gosh! So you were coming down that 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 rope rope ladder, banging against the side of the ship, banging against the side of the ship. Oh my goodness mm -hmm. sakes! In the meantime, they were putting the. And I figured I can't swim if I if I fall, I'm gone. Holy cow! <laughs> You should have said, help, I can't swim. Don't do that. <laughs> you had to go over whether you wanted to or not. Oh, yeah. Well, you were, you were a brave man and, uh, and very, very lucky. That, that's wonderful. So then, uh, um, do you have any, uh, any funny stories to tell about coming across the Atlantic on the troop ship? No, not finished. Well, we just used to do our exercise and stuff like that. You came like out that. of New York, did you? No, I came out of uh, North Fork, Virginia. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Came out of North Fork, Virginia. Well, that's interesting. Some of the other troops came out of the 2nd uh, Armed Division, came out of New Jersey. Right. And they met in North Fork, Virginia, where we met there. And then from North Fork, Virginia, we sailed to Africa. I see. Now, did you, did you sail in a convoy? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Large convoy. Large convoy. Yeah. It had Navy ships uh, escorting. Yeah, Navy ships were escorting. Destroyers yeah. and so yeah. forth. Yeah. yeah. One night, I had to pull guard duty on one of the ships. In them days, you had, I guess when you were in the Navy, yeah. you had these big helmets, you know? Remember oh, yeah. the big helmets? With, with a, a talker? Right, yeah. You had your we were pulling, I was pulling guard because, oh, sure. you know, that night on the ship, Sure, and they had the arm. Make sure that the ships weren't getting too close together at night. That's right. 
And the, the Navy had what they called the armed guard. Mm -hmm. They had uh, sailors who were gunners and so forth aboard. Right, right. Oh, that, well, that must have been. <laughs> here, here, here's the boy from, from Norwood, Ohio, going across the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, right. Isn't it First time I've seen the ocean. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> Yeah, that it's was a, not, yeah, not that, an uncommon uh, right. experience. And uh, how many days do you remember it took you to get across? I think it was about 10 days, about I 10 think. Days. Yeah, yeah, 10 days. Did you experience any storms and rough water? Yeah, a couple of storms. We were doing exercise on the top deck. Yeah. And we used to get splashed with water sometimes right. because the ship is going down and oh, up. Yeah. Well, you know. The North Atlantic was terrible. Yeah, it was. Awful, that was terrible. Awful. And you get seasick. A lot of guys were seasick. Oh. Never been on a ship before. Horrible. Yeah. I was, uh, the, the guys were on the main deck and over the side, you know. Over the side, you bet. Yeah. Carried your helmet around on the strap mm -hmm. over your yeah. arm. <laughs> then when you're eating lunch, eating your dinner on the ship, you got to hold your mess kit on the side, otherwise it'll slide away from you. Right, exactly, exactly. So you went, uh, so there you went ashore. Um, now, on, uh, uh, going ashore on that LCI, you just ran up on the beach? Right, they dropped the, drop the, the forward. Front. You're going through some water, you know. Yeah. They dropped the front, the door in the front, and you're going in. Yeah. Did you hit deep water when you went off? No, not too deep. Not too not bad. Not too deep. I wasn't too bad. They Good. get in, they get a little bit in, a little bit further than the LS, uh, yeah. LSDs. Got your, L, got your feet wet. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I should say. Yeah. And then uh, going ashore then, what, what uh, did you have a place where you were going to bivouac? Yeah, yeah, well, actually we went into shore and then we, there was a few, little fighting going on for a few days, yeah. but it only lasted about three days and was over. And then we moved on to Casablanca around the cork forest, what uh -huh. they call the cork forest. The trees up there were huge. It's just, filled with cork, mm -hmm. and the Arabs used to come around, stri strip them, strip the forks, the cork, cork. strip the cork, From the tree. pile it up on their, uh, on a camel's back, and bring it to a big pile, and you would see it like burning. They make charcoal out of it. Oh, I'll be darned, mm -hmm. I never heard that story. That's interesting. Yeah. Now, but you say, now, when you came ashore, were you under fire? Enemy fire? Uh, not much. Not much fire. Because uh, that was the Vichy yeah. French, uh, what was the name? General Patin, I yeah. think it was. Yeah. He was head of the Vichy France over there. Yeah. It didn't last but a couple of days. They gave up in three days. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that was a sad, sad bit of history, too. Yeah. France being taken over by the... By the Nazis. Oh, that was terrible. Well, now, here you are in foreign soil. Right. <laughs> and of all places, Africa. Africa. Good heavenly mm -hmm. days. What was going through your mind? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. But, uh, you know, Africa it was Africa. Yeah. And we stayed there for about, I guess, another close to a year. Got some really? more training and everything, okay. and uh, every day, you know, you get up, you do your exercise, you walk so many miles every day. While we were bivouacked, we had a big lake right around us. There was a big lake there. And every morning, we had to get up and run around that lake for how many times, get your exercise and all that. And then we used to sleep in the pup tents. They had pup tents. And uh, one night, I was sleeping in this pup tent, you carry half of a pup tent, your buddy carried the other half when you put them together at night. So, and the pup tent goes into a point in the back. Mm -hmm. And that's where we used to keep our, the right letters and all that sure. kind of stuff in there. Stick so down. Yeah, so one night, well, I was sound asleep in that pup tent, and I heard something rattling in my head, it was close to my head. And I looked around, looked around, I couldn't find it. So I went back to sleep, start sleeping again, and here that thing was again. So I got up, looked around, pulled up the stuff, and there was a damn snake all around, curled around in there. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so I didn't sleep in that tent anymore. I oh. went in the tank and slept in the tank. Wow. 
Well, you were you were in desert type of land, weren't you? Well, no, it wasn't desert. It was more a lot of forests and like and really? like the cork forest and cork stuff forest. like that. Yeah, palm trees and they had palm mm -hmm. trees and so forth. Now, did you get into the city of Casablanca? Casablanca. Got into the city of Casablanca. I got into the city of Ram. I got into the city of Bekesh, they called it. Uh -huh. Then I got into okay. four or five cities in Africa. In, uh, oh, that's very while we were there, we used to get a lot. We used to get furloughs to go into town. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And mingle with the people. Yeah, mingle in with the people. But a lot of times, a bunch of us guys used to go in town, and we stayed more on our own. Sure. Find some, a bar. Find a bar. Yeah. We get beer and stuff yeah. like that. They have good times. Well, you've you've. Seen You've seen the movie Casablanca. Yes, you? in Casablanca. In Casablanca. You saw it there mm -hmm. in Casablanca. Yeah, well, of course, that's a great movie, but uh, uh, <clears throat> a different kind of a story yeah. from what you were up against. Well, now, um, as, a, as, a, as a tank man and a, a driver and so forth, um, tell us about your, your experience. Were you in the desert against the desert fox? Or no, Rommel? no, I didn't get that far. Didn't get that far. No, I see. Mm -mm. Well, while we were in Africa, though, some of the some of the men in our company, our some of the tanks got called to help uh, in the desert, going through the Kazarine Pass oh, yes. in the fight with Rommel, uh, with uh, Montgomery. Yeah. Yeah. Some of the units did go up. In Tunisia. See, you had 67th Armored Regiment, 66th Armored Regiment, different regiments. What was in your regiment? 67th. 67th. Yeah. Now, was that comprised of primarily fellows from a certain area, like well, New York State or what? What was the 67th? 67th like? was an armored regiment. Yeah. Like, uh, were they you from had all over? Cup, please? Were they from all over the country? Yeah, the guys were from all over the country. Mm -hmm. They had six. You had the 67, 66, and uh, another another one there had there, and uh, and uh, that's what it consisted of. You know. Sure. Yeah. So you met fellows from different parts of the uh, of the east, eastern part of the United States. Well, before we left for Africa, we used to uh, we did all our maneuvers in the Carolinas. Oh yeah. Yeah, we did the maneuvers in the Carolinas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that that's uh, now. Now, by this time, you were a sergeant, right? Uh, in North Africa. In North Africa. No, I didn't get to be a sergeant until I was over in um, in France. I think it was in oh, France. I see. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, uh, did you go through the Kasserine Pass? No, I didn't. In Tunisia? No, I didn't, but part of the unit yeah, did. Yeah, part of the unit did. In fact, when I was in Africa, I caught malaria fever. Oh, you did? Yeah, oh, I caught malaria fever. Terrible. And I was in and out of the hospital. Oh, for heaven's but, sake. But uh, in fact, one time I went into the hospital, in the field hospital, and I came back. They, they said you went back to the unit, and I wasn't there two days, and I was back in the hospital again. Had a recurrence of the same mm -hmm, thing? Mm -hmm. Goodness sake. Malaria must have been a terrible yeah. thing. Yeah. I had it about, I think when I was in Africa, I had it about three times. It came okay. back on me about three times, yeah. Oh, my goodness. And uh, do you think that was because you got bitten by a mosquito? Yeah. Or? They say you had to be bitten by a female mosquito. Yeah. yeah. That's what they tell me. Terrible. Terrible. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of the fellows in the South Pacific had that, too. I, I, was, I imagine I, over there where you were. They I, probably well, I was, I, I was very lucky. I was mm -hmm. very lucky. I, did. I was on shipboard, and that, oh, yeah. that saved me from that, actually. But, um, well, this is just fascinating, Bill, to hear you uh, tell about your experiences there. Um, what, what else about uh, before you were transported across the Mediterranean, um, where did you, where did you depart from, from North Africa? To go, did you go to Sicily and then Italy? Oh, no, no. Well, we left North Africa. We left North Africa. That's when we left North Africa. We went through the Straits of Gibraltar oh. and went into Scotland. 
Oh, you went clear up and around. Right. We went into Scotland. My then from Scotland, they shipped us to England. Then when we got to England, I was, they put us in a, a little town called Tidworth. And there was, a, there was an army base there. Mm -hmm. And we, we used that. Mm. We stayed there until we got some more training. And we stayed there for mm, maybe six, eight months. I don't know exactly really? how long. And then we waterproofed our tanks while we were there. We had like... It came, you know, covered the back of the engine and came up real high like that and went down so the water wouldn't, you know, we can, the, the, uh, mo the motors wouldn't get flooded out by water. So we had it all encased in metal, in like galvanized steel so that you can, uh, or not steel, but metal. So the water, motor, the motors wouldn't stall out because right. when we landed in, when I landed in France, we went in through pretty much water. Right. was almost up the top of the tank. By the courtesy of the U.S. Navy. Please? By the courtesy of the U.S. Right. Navy. That's when we, <laughs> that's when we went across, across the English Channel in LSTs. Wow. Oh, my gosh. More seasickness. Mm, yeah. Shallow, <laughs> flat bottom vessel. Yeah. <laughs> well, now, the, the training that you had, was that in southern, southern England? Uh, yeah, I guess it was. Before you departed? Southern. Because there was a terrible, I don't know if you were aware of it or not, there was a terrible tragedy, a training tragedy in southern England where many uh, American soldiers were, were drowned. When they, when they were practicing, you yes. mean? Yes. Yes, I remember that. You knew about they were that. Pra they were training. Yeah. To, to right. break the invasion. Oh, yeah. yeah. They lost some their lives of, before they even got against the enemy. Yeah, they made some kind of a big mistake or something. Terrible. I don't know who it was, but I heard about yeah, it. Yeah, but was I wasn't there. Yeah, there's a whole book written about that, too. Well, now, going back a little bit, how about Scotland? Were you in Scotland very long? Just for one night. Oh, just one night. Just okay. for one night. <laughs> Glasgow, Scotland. How about that? Yeah. Big, big port. Yeah, mm -hmm. right, right. That's the first time you could see green grass and everything because in Africa you didn't see that much green grass or anything. That's right. All you saw was brown land. Right. Wasn't it? right. Yeah. Yeah. Any, any more uh, humorous experiences that you recall about North Africa and then going around to Scotland? No, not really. Just that uh, when we were in Africa, why we used to get like I said, we used to go to town, sure. you know, get, get passes to go to town and here and there. And we went into Castle Blanca and me and my buddies, we had a good time in there drinking, drinking beer. Sure. And one of the guys, his name was Broussard. Uh, he, uh, it was his birthday. So we went into Castle Blanca and uh, we ordered champagne. We we're drinking champagne and wound up drinking beer. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> then we got sent back to the company. We we're all a little bit, you know, yeah. a little hazy. And then they were just settle, settling down into the tents. When the sergeant called over us out, we had a nighttime maneuvers. <laughs> they put you, they give you the compasses, you know, and you got to find this place, you got to find that place. Sure. And uh, we couldn't wait to be back in camp to go to sleep. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> well, you're lucky. You're lucky you got through that one all right. Right, right. right. I should say. Well, now, so uh, in Chitwood, Chitwood, England, was that the name of it? Tidworth. Chitworth. I Chitworth. got in Tidworth. Yeah, Chitworth. then we used to go to London. We used to go to Manchester. Oh, boy. Different places like that. We get passes. Well, now, you saw a lot of destruction then in London oh, yeah. at that time. Because yeah. the Blitz was over, but right. yeah, a lot it had of been terribly damaged. Well, we used to go through London, and they would, they were still getting bombed now and then, and they used to blow the sirens, and everybody run down. They called it the tube. Yeah, the they tube. They run under the ground, stayed under there, and people, people used to sleep there at night. Oh, yeah. They had their blankets and their beds and stuff down there and sleep there during the night. Yes, England suffered terribly, yeah. uh, as, of course, France and Germany and Italy as well. But, um, <clears throat> well, I, that's, I, I think it's very interesting that you, uh, your outfit was not sent to Italy from North Africa, but 
instead clear around. Yeah, yeah, we went, to, like you said. Because they, they were really training you for the Normandy landings, right, weren't they? Right, right, Okay, now, coming up on that. Well, when we come up on that, we knew something was coming because they were pulling us all out of Sidworth. And we went to the staging area to go across. But while we were there, a big storm came up and we stayed there for a while until the storm blew over. Then we landed in France in the Omaha Beach, D plus four, four days okay. after the invasion. Right. And then after, the, after we got invasion, we knocked the uh, waterproofing off the tank and drove further into France. Then we bivouacked in there for the night as far as we could go. We stayed there the night and that night one guy had to be awake all night to guard the tanks, you know, be a guard sure. for that night. So while we were there that night, uh, the German planes came over and started throwing down some bombs, you know. And I mean, they were huge, huge bombs. And the first man got killed was uh, Spitty. We used to call him Spitty. He was the maintenance man for our tanks. Mm. He got hit, had hit pretty hard, and then a lot of us would run underneath the tank, to hide underneath the tank. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Goodness sakes, well. Then after we start moving from there, we went into the hedgerow section. And I guess you heard about the hedgerow section. Oh, yeah. And uh, that was kind of rough going through there because the hedgerow section was so high, and on top of the hedgerow section was a lot of branches sure. sticking up, and you couldn't see very close underbrush. Yeah, very close. Like very close. And on one part of the hedgerow section, they'd have like a gate that you can open up. But uh, we used to go through the hedgerow. You're, you'd go up like this up with a tank and bang, bang, bang back down. And when you're up like that, that's the vulnerable part of the tank yeah. underneath. Sure. So uh, then we got stuck in the hedgerow section for a while until we pulled out of there. Um, did you have, uh, did you have any of your crew, uh, injured? None of my crew, none of my crew got, no, we didn't get hit. None of the crew got lost there. Some of the other ones did, but not in my crew. We got, we got through okay. Now, this was the M4 tank? Yeah. Yeah. M4 tank. And you told us before, what, 330 caliber? 330 calibers. You had one, you had like, like this was the assistant driver, he had a machine gun in his lap right here. Right. You could pull it any way you wanted to go. And on, on top, between the, the gunner and the commander, there was a 37 millimeter. And right next to the 37 millimeter was a 37, 30, 30 caliber machine gun. And then where I was sitting as a commander, right here was swiveled around, you had a 30, you had a 30, uh, millimeter machine gun there and in the back where you sit down in here you had all your shells all uh, piercing shells sure. personnel shells yeah. yeah well you know you've had such intense experience and you must have uh, you must have felt something in your heart about you know, what am I doing here? What's going to happen? <laughs> yeah. And there's the enemy out there trying, here, to, right here. trying to get a, do away with you. Mm -hmm. And then before, when we were making the invasion of, uh, uh, while we were crossing the English Channel into France, into Normandy, there was a lot of, the LS, I was here, and another LST was here. That got hit by a mine and lost the equipment and men. In 20 minutes, that was gone. She was gone. But the Navy tried to pick up a lot of survivors, though. Yeah. They picked up a lot of survivors with the LCIs and other ships, but most of it, all the equipment and everything was gone in 20 minutes. Goodness sakes. Well, um, how long did it take you to get across the channel? To several hours? Several hours about, yeah. We left, 
We left early in the morning. We were there late that evening, I think, or early afternoon, something okay. like that. Wasn't taking us too long. And that was on an LST. Mm-hmm. All right. An LST, the big opened up in the front. You know, they opened up in the yeah, front. Yeah, they opened up like that. They opened yeah. up like that. Yeah. And then you drive on out. Right. And I was, I think, first or second guy off the LST into the, into shore. Did the water come into the tank? No, it didn't come in, but it was pretty close. Pretty close. It was pretty high, yeah. But they got you in pretty close to mm -hmm. that, yeah. So now you're driving that tank up, up the shore, huh? Mm-hmm. And you were under fire. Not too bad, uh, yeah. From the... Uh, from the planes. From the planes. They sure. were, they were, uh, they were machine gunning, dropping, dropping bombs. They were German planes were flying, still you could, flying around. You could see the planes. Yeah, you could see the planes flying around. But luckily, you know, I, you did see they cleaned up the beach pretty fast. Yeah. Because when I got there four days afterwards, yes. you didn't see too many dead soldiers right. laying around because you know that day there oh, was quite was a few terrible. of them got yeah. Oh. A lot of thousands them. and thousands of boys. Yeah. Yeah, that was yeah. terrible. But they had the beach thing. cleaned up pretty good. Yeah. <clears throat> well, and of course, that would also facilitate the follow-up, you know, the supplies, right. and everything else everything coming else. ashore. Yeah. So, um, and you're speaking of the hedgerows, that a lot of people don't understand what that is. And of course, that's the, as you described it, uh, the roads were down here and there was a bank. And then on top of that right. were all the, the bushes and the right. trees and undergrowth and right. everything. Right. So it was that was a formidable yeah. obstacle to overcome, yeah, wasn't it? Finally, I think they divided away. They took a Sherman tank and welded like forks on the front of it. Oh yeah, that would tear up the ground. They go back and forth uh, and kind of tear up the ground, and it make it a little easier to get through. Sure, sure. Were you under fire when you were trying to go through the hedgerows? No, not under not then. No. No. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Now you were you were heading across northern France, right? Well, yeah. From there, from there, uh, we headed across northern France. Then we got stopped around Saint Lô. Saint Lô. Saint Lô. That the Germans were pretty well fortified in Saint Lô. Yeah, that was a bump. So we stood on the outside. We didn't go in, but then. They were bombed. It must have been 40, 50, 50 B, uh, B-17s came over while we were outside of it. Right. And they were dropping bombs into all St. Lowe. Yeah. They tore up that place like you wouldn't oh, believe. Yeah. Yeah. And then from there, after the planes left, the Germans started pulling back, and we followed them. Mm -hmm. We kept going right behind the Germans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, um, and then, but then you would see a lot of Dead animals, cows, horses, pigs, laying all over the place. Oh. And the stench sometimes yeah. was something awful. Yeah. You never can forget that. Mm -hmm. Never, never, never. The, um, did you get into Paris? No. Never got to Paris? He was lucky. Yeah. <laughs> he got into Paris. I did. Well, our division, we came close to Paris. But then... I guess that was Eisenhower's orders. I guess it was Eisenhower's orders. I don't know. We stayed on the outside of Paris while the French Second Army Division went in. Yeah, they wanted them to go in. They uh, wanted the Second Army was the French there. to go in there first. Yeah. So the yeah, French went in, then we went around Paris. Yeah. Did you ever see De Gaulle? No. I no. saw Patton. Did you really? Like he saw Patton. Then yeah. there was one time, I think it was in Africa, Churchill was there, and Eisenhower was there, and our that we had to pull guard around the whole area. Right. So uh, you know, sure. nothing would happen. Did you see Montgomery? No. Never saw Montgomery. Just no, I never saw yeah. Montgomery. Well, now, so you you skirted Paris. Yeah. Was that going north of Paris or south of Paris? Do you remember? Uh, I think it was north. Probably north. Because we went through north of Paris and get on past, we passed Paris. Okay, so now we're, we're talking about the summer, the summer of 44, Bill. And uh, how was the weather at that time in northern France? 
parents' weather was pretty nice. Yeah, it was warm, you know, it wasn't cold or anything. Until, well, then when winter came along, you know, then we moved from Paris into Belgium. Okay. I mean, from France into Belgium. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now, so in the winter of 44, were you in the Ardennes? Were you in no. the... No. Forest, I or? was no, I wasn't in the Ardennes. In winter, winter in '44, I think we were in Belgium at the time. In Belgium. In Belgium, it was cold. Oh, terrible! It was terrible cold. I and, uh, it was. You sleep. Uh, in fact, a couple of nights, I just slept in the tank. The ground, the ground was so cold. I just slept in the tank and had the overcoats and blankets wrapped around you. Just sleep sitting up. Sure. Then one night. When the weather got better, we were moving into France and into Belgium, and we come across this farmland, and there was uh, bales of hay there. So we took the bales of hay and made beds out of them, and slept on there, and covered ourselves with the uh, with the with the, no, the uh, pup tent, half of the oh. pup tent. But then it rained so dang on hard that night. We had to get up and get back in the tank. <laughs> <laughs> and no facilities either. Mm. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. But being in a tank like that, of course, there was no insulation or no. No, it's no, all steel. In, no interior heat. No. Well, you no the heat, the motor because the engines were in the back. Oh, the engines, yeah. It had so. two engines in the back, <laughs> and then in the winter time when it was cold, we used to have you know we had mess kits and, and we had our uh, water ki uh, container. Yeah. Uh, and then from there, when it got cold, we had these little C rations, you know, and mm -hmm. K rations. Mm -hmm. And we had the, uh, filled the, uh, uh, the water, what do you call it? What do we call those, Art? <laughs> we carried the water in them. Canteens. Canteens. <laughs> we had the canteens, we put coffee in there, uh -huh. fill it up with water. And we tie it on the back of our exhaust pipe, so the exhaust <laughs> pipe would heat it, oh, and we would drink something hot. Oh my God! Drink hot, hot, hot coffee. It's lucky you weren't poisoned to death. No. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness. Yeah. yeah. Well, that uh, you know, you learned you learned to well, exist. You, you got you? to. You got to. It's either that or you don't make it. They don't make it. One or the other. Right. And Yankee ingenuity and all that Always good stuff. the top, always the top. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, Belgium uh, in the wintertime was... It was cold. It was pretty bad, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was pretty yeah. bad, pretty yeah. cold. Yeah. And uh, so where were you when the Battle of the Bulge was going on? That was well, December of 44. December of 44, part of my unit went to relieve him. Oh, part of the 2nd Army Division went to relieve him, but I was back in the hospital again with malaria. Oh, gosh. Boy. Well, at least you missed, you missed I that. I missed bad. that, yeah. Yeah, that was a terrible, mm -hmm. terrible time, time. Okay, so then when you were released, finally, and did you catch up with the same outfit? Yeah. 67. Always at the same outfit. Always with the 67. Always with the 67. So how, how did you get back, catch up with them? By truck? By truck. Okay. Yeah, Okay. by truck. All right. Now, you saw the German planes, the Messerschmitts mm -hmm. and the Falkwolfs and yeah, those kind. all those yeah. great fighters that they had. That Stuka dive bomber. Stuka mm -hmm. dive Oh, my gosh. What was that experience like? Was there a screaming noise? Well, there was a screaming noise. They'd come down maybe, I don't know, 150 miles an hour, yeah. something like that, coming down, screaming like anything, and then they would pull up, and drop, drop, drop a couple of bombs and fly off. Yeah, yeah. Did bombs fall near you? Uh, I can't remember. I don't think so. Not, a, were, not too were, many. Only, only towards us in... When we first got in there, yeah. Yeah. When we first got into France, yeah. Right, right. My goodness sakes. Well, uh, that's another thing. We've got uh, we've got a great uh, museum out here at the Claremont County Airport called the Warbird Museum, mm -hmm. 
where we restore World War II airplanes. And I've got to get you, you guys to get out there and see that. We've got P-51 Mustang. We've got uh, a Falk Wolf 190. Oh, yeah. uh, and all these planes are made to fly. That's another story because we want to, we want to get, we want to get Bill Carelli's story <laughs> here. Uh, <clears throat> now, mm -hmm. you're catching up with the 67th again. Yeah, and where, in, where in you, Belgium. In, you're still in Belgium. Mm -hmm. Was the field hospital in Belgium? No, not the field hospital. The field hospitals were in Africa. The regular hospitals was in Belgium. We used, they used the ho regular hospitals in Belgium. I don't know if maybe they took over some of the ones that were already nice. there. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Then from Belgium, that's when we start moving again. Yeah. And then, uh, then one day, we uh, got orders to push the Germans again. Uh -huh. And we start pushing the Germans back. And they were shelling us. They were throwing over there. And my buddy in the next tank, he got hit. I was here. He was over here. He got hit. And tank started burning like crazy and they all came out they were all burning when they came out and they were I don't know what happened to them because we had a kit we kept on going sure. but all four of them got out alive but they were burning when they came out Bad. I don't know whatever happened to them I'll be on you lost track of him yeah. mm -hmm. you know which brings to mind uh, do you still keep in touch with uh, no Bell? I did in the beginning yeah. I didn't in the beginning. Did you go to reunions and mm -hmm. things like that? We, we kept, well, not reunions. We used to keep in contact. One of yeah. the guy come into town sure. and, uh, you know, I showed him around and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Because they were from all over the country, I you know. know. And we've lost so many guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's really sad. Well, um, so now you're, work, you're working your way through Belgium. Into Holland. Into Holland. Oh, you went into Holland. Mm-hmm. I'll be darned. Now, um, I talked to a guy yesterday who, <laughs> he, he was at the corner where Belgium and Luxembourg and France all come together oh, is that at right? a point. He stood, he stood in three countries. Yeah. Himself. Himself? By moving his feet. By this. <laughs> he was right there at the cross. Was he? And uh, oh, yeah. so you got through Belgium. And then in, into Holland. Then into Holland. Now and tell in, us about Holland. Then when it got into Holland, I was seeing those big windmills and everything. You know, that looked pretty good. So then we got into Holland. We were moving towards Holland. And the, uh, um, after, when we got into Holland, we were going up this road. And uh, that's when we saw some people in the middle of, in the, street, in the highway there in the street country road, whatever you want to call it. And uh, we got out to find out what was the matter. At that time, a couple of shells came over mm -hmm. and hit. And that's when this broodsard, the, uh, the guy that was there, he got hurt. He got hurt. Uh, the, guy, the guy was in my tank. He got hurt, and they sent him back to the hospital and never seen him again. I don't know. And that's when I, and that's when I lost one tank because we were going up the road and I saw some Germans flying up, uh, pretty far up. And then we were moving on up and I got hit with a bazooka or something on the side and uh, it knocked off the traction, broke the traction. I couldn't move anymore. So then we, were, we got out of the tank and as I got out of the tank, they start shelling us again. Hmm. So from, we all ran to the side of the road where the ditches were, you know. I guess when, when it rains, the water, yeah. you know, makes these ditches. So we all laid flat in the ditches until, until they stopped shelling. Then we got up and somehow or another, I don't remember how I got another tank, and we moved on. Mm -hmm. So the maintenance comes up, picks up the old tank, they repair them so they can use them again. Sure. How many tanks were in your, your group? Five. Four. 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 A, B, C, and D. I'll be darned. I'll be darned. 
and all the same type. Mm -hmm. okay. All M M4s. M4, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, now, you mentioned uh, Patton. Did you get to see Patton in person? No, I don't, I don't think I got to yeah. see him. I don't remember, really. I don't know if I ever see him or not. Yeah. I've never seen him. I don't know. Who, I might have, I don't know. Who was your general commander? Uh, in my, de my department, uh, de uh, my division was, or my 67th Armored Regiment was General White, or Colonel White. Colonel White. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Patton was the head of the 2nd Armored Division. Sure. Did and you my captain, the captain, his name was uh, Captain Knight. Anybody else from Cincinnati besides you? No. Nobody. Oh, when I got drafted, there was a lot, you know. Yeah, but, but after we but, got separated, but not over no. There. Not no. Over there. I see. Never seen anymore. Yeah, yeah. The one well, guy was from, my buddy was from Chicago, and the other guy was from Michigan. And the other guy was from Wisconsin. You know, they're scattered sure. all around. And that was a great experience too, wasn't it? Meeting the different oh, yeah. people. Yeah. People you'd never laid eyes on. Yeah, yeah, you never laid eyes. Well, they, they got to be your buddies. Yes, I And should. you depend on them for help, and they depend on you for help. Absolutely. Absolutely. Support and great, great. Mm -hmm. How about your medics? Did you have good medics? Yeah, as far as I, yeah, they had good medics. Yeah. Luckily, I didn't have. Only the thing I had was malaria fever. Well, that was terrible. I know. That was awful stuff, though. Um, going across, then you got into Germany. Right. Okay, tell us about that. Well, we got into Germany, but I don't know. Uh, the only town I can remember in Germany was a small town. It was near Dusseldorf. Okay. It was called Puffendorf. <laughs> and we had a little scrimmage there, and that was it. Because I think about that time, no, wait a minute, wait, but that caused, <laughs> I must, I, then they, I got off the front line, I think because I got sick again, and they sent me back, put me on a plane, because I lost a lot of weight, they said I lost a lot of weight, wow. and they sent me back to England on a plane, on the C-47. Oh. And I got back into England, and I stayed in England for a while in the hospital in England. And then they decided to send me back home, and they put me on a, on a uh, hospital ship and sent me back home into, into New York, and I came back. Because oh, ca when I came back, I, and I was in England, I, I, was I in England or was I in New York when the war was over? I'm not sure. Did you get a warm welcome in New York when you got back? Well, I got a, we pulled into New York. Yeah, we had a lot of uh, ships around, you know, and everything like sure. that. Sure. Just like when we pull into small towns, like in France and everything, these people come out with wine and calvados and flowers and stuff like that. Yeah, the French were very, very happy. Yeah, they were happy to see you. You saved their happy you know what again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the, um, then you didn't spend much time in Germany, right? No, I didn't spend much time in Germany because they sent me, sent me back to the hospital again. Yeah. And then from the hospital, they kept me there for a while, checked me out. They said, well, we're going to send you back to England. Back to England. So we went back to England. I How stayed, long were you there in England in the hospital? Uh, I guess a couple of months. No kidding. Maybe two, three months. Oh, goodness sake. And then from there, they put me on a uh, medical ship and sent me home. Sure. Well, then and you I got... Go please. ahead. Then I was up in uh, Port Custer in Percy Jones Hospital there for, I don't know, Four, five months, six months, really? I don't remember, yeah. My goodness, you really had a serious problem, didn't you? With malaria, yeah. Terrible. Yeah, my goodness. Well, in England then, did you have any opportunity? Did, did English people? Oh, yeah, they were real nice mingle people. Mingle with you? Oh, yeah, they part. mingled with us. We, some nice. of the English people, we'd go into their houses and Wonderful. they welcomed us in yeah. and stuff like that, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, they were very, very friendly. Yes, I should very say. Very friendly. 
Well, I think they were, I think they were sincerely, truly uh, thankful for, mm. for America's help. Oh, I, I think so. Yeah, I yeah. should say so. All right, so you got back to the States, and uh, now you weren't married at the time, were you? No. No. I, was engaged, I was engaged, but not married. <laughs> and your sweetheart? She waited. Oh, wasn't that wonderful, <laughs> I should say. And she was a Cincinnati girl? She was. All right. It was his sister. Oh, yeah. Okay. Gotcha. <laughs> mm -hmm. How about that? Well, she passed away about a year and a half ago. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, that's... Uh, and and uh, you have children here? Just the one son. Just one son, God bless him. That's wonderful. That's right. I don't know what to do. I don't know what I would do without him. Oh, I know what you mean. Yeah. Well, you're very lucky, and he's lucky to to have you. That, mm, that is a true. So you got grandchildren. Two grandchildren and one great grandchild. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> that is just. That is so great. I would have had another grandson, but he died. Huh? Great yeah. Great grandson. Great grandson died. She only carried him about seven months, and the oh, baby right. Daisy died. I know what I mean. Well, now um, you're enjoying your retirement. Very much so. Do you keep busy? I try to. What do you do? Cut the grass, wash my car, clean the house, <laughs> cook, a little bit of everything. Sounds very familiar. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well, Bill, it's just, uh, it's been such a joy and a pleasure to meet you. I know that your family and friends are going to be so happy to see you on the DVD. And, um, you know, you can get copies made of it if you want to and send it to friends or whatever. And uh, it's important that you're on record now mm -hmm. because your story is so important and you made such a great contribution and our nation is so proud of you and we thank you for that god bless you and i i hope our paths cross again i hope so thank okay. you very much yeah. well it's okay. great okay.